friends welcome to the world of project management motto of this training is to share my experience in preparing for pmp certification in this training i have prepared few import slides by gathering data from different trainings which i have attended during my certification preparation friends let's start with my introduction first i am anil kumar dharam based in the city of Nizam's Hyderabad, working in IT for 14 years. I am work, currently working as a project lead and manager for 4 years and I did my certification in 2019. Currently, I am working for two major projects. And today we are going to cover in this session the PMI project framework and the processes. Today agenda is how to get your PMP certification the PMBO guide, the key concepts of project management, the project management processes, the project environment, and the role of the project manager. Let's start with the chapter one in this section with how to get your PMP certification. Its process starting from sub submitting the application with required training arts, education qualifications and getting approved from the PMI and other payment processes. Going in more detail, we have a PM book, uh, PMP handbook in which it covers all the details of this process and also mentioned about the guidelines of project manager ethics. Uh, referring to the slide on the left hand side, the process is clearly mentioned from start to end that is from the application submission application completeness review which takes five days and the audit process which for which you have 90 days to send your audit materials and once the audit is completed uh, you have to go for the application payment process and you have to book your slot uh, this the profile the approved profile will be applicable for from the date of the application for one year so it's a simple process where we have to the, the uh, submit the application uh, to get certified we should have the minimum uh, uh, qualification uh, which is for the second degree uh, which is high school diploma associate degree or global equivalent with the project management experience minimum five years or 16 months unique non-overlapping professional uh, project experience and which in which uh, we have to at least the 7500 hours we, we have to spend on the project management and uh, and mandatory we should have 35 hours of uh, training on the uh, formal education or we have the other option on the educational background if we have a four year degree that is bachelor degree or global equivalent minimum three years or 36 months unique non overlapping project experience is required with a 4500 awards is enough for uh, this one and uh, along with the mandate one the 35 contact hours for formal education this is a simple uh, information for to get your PMP certification uh, let's move to the uh, next slides before going to start the chapter on the project management framework and other topics let's give you a few important tips for the preparation uh, first is we have to prepare a detailed study plan in which everything has to be recorded so that you can track your status by the end of your preparation set a target goal of uh, three months for your preparation and two months for your mock test preparation so make sure that uh, you uh, take your time in the morning or in that you are convenient after your work and make sure that you complete one section or one topic every day and keep the notes updated and track your status on this detailed study plan the second thing is that uh, go for the PMI membership and buy the latest PM book copy uh, for which you can reference the entire chapters we have another Rita multi version uh, Rita multi author version also in which uh, there is the uh, project management processes are explained in a simple way uh, but the the core part is is mentioned in the PM book uh, which is mentioned uh, which is approved by the PMI so apart from these three steps uh, before the exam make sure that you take the leave uh, from your work and prepare 
for your mocks which is available in the different portals Udemy or online portals we have many portals so make sure that you prepared many uh, as much as possible you can attend the mocks and try to get minimum 70 to 80 percent in the mock so that you can uh, get clear in your certification with the passing score these are the simple steps uh, in the future of videos i will give you more tips uh, which is when it is in progress let's move to the chapter let's move to the chapter 2 the pm book guide what is pm book and it's important so pm box simply referring as a guide a guide to the project management of a uh, body of knowledge it defines as a subset of uh, the project management and a good practice i mean the gen generally recognized things and a good practice generally recognized means the knowledge and practices are mentioned in this uh, project management are applicable to the most of the projects and at most of the time and it's a good practice in science so the application of the skills tools and techniques mentioned in this project management pm book guide are enhances the success of your project it's just a simple way it is defined in a simple way that is generally recognized and a good practice uh, so let's move this is a pm book guide so let's move to the relationship of this project management to the other management principles the model on this slide shows the black circle as a project management body of knowledge and the yellow circle represents a subset described in the PMBO guide. But as you can see, there are often knowledge areas needed as well to successfully manage a project and they overlap. The general circle is specific knowledge for the industry or a type of industry. Uh, example how to build an office building or how to develop a new medicine etc the red circle which is at the bottom is a generic management knowledge example how to lead and motivate a team in a virtual environment using some tools like skype sharepoint etc so this is a simple way the relationship to the other management displays is defined so moving to the next chapter in this section is the key concept of the project management framework uh, before that uh, it's uh, we have one slide for how the pm book look like that it contains uh, the introduction part and all the knowledge areas the 10 knowledge areas starting from integration scope schedule cost quality resource communications risk procurement and stakeholder in the future videos it will be i am going to discuss in more detail about each knowledge area and each processes at the end of the the purchased referenced book contains the agile practice guide also but uh, you don't need to study this for the pmp examination it is uh, provided for your knowledge and reference so let's start with the key concepts uh, which i mentioned uh, just now a project first we will discuss about what is a project the project management scenarios of a project program and portfolio and the project life cycle versus the product life cycle and also we have the predictive versus agile project life cycle and progressive elaboration these are the key concepts which we need to understand very clearly for the project management uh, trainings knowing some details by heart will help but uh, it's far more important that you understand every detail in the PMBO guide so let's start first with the project what is a project so we have simple explanation that is a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product service or result temporary means it should, it should have a end date that isn't temporary uh, for example in the real IT environment if the project is keep on going uh, it should not be considered as a project it's an the operations one the operations thing which has no end and into the unique means here the product or service is different in some distinguished way from all the other similar products so it should be a unique product of that project so it's simply defined as a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product it's a simple project hope you understand it there is a difference between a project and operations example the project activities 
and the run on operations in the IT environment. Uh, for run and, as I said, run and operations works which has no end. As I know, you will think as why we are doing these projects. It's so simple as the projects are the key way to enable the creation of some value and benefits to the organizations. That is, we can, uh, in simple way, it provides a business value. We can measure this in terms of some uh, benefits from the uh, business perspective uh, and which can be derived in uh, the two ways, tangible and intangible. I hope you uh, got these points, tangible and intangible. Tangible benefits means the monetary assets, actual what's the money things, tools and market shares. And the intangible means which cannot be seen, that is the goodwill to the company, the brand recognition and the copyrights. Hope you understand why we require the projects for our organizations. Finally, I can conclude as a project will always change something in the organization. And in return, we have some benefits. This is in simple way. Hope you guys understand clearly what is a project now and why we require and execute the projects. So let's move to the next slide, project management. Let's discuss on what is project management and how it is defined in a simple way. It's an application of knowledge, as already mentioned, it's the knowledge of body of knowledge, which contains the skills, tools and techniques to the project activities in order to meet the project requirements. So for an for a, for example, for a project based on the requirement, what are the tools, techniques and the knowledge which we are going to apply to that project to get successful is called as the project management in a simple way. So, I uh, hope you understand it. Next, I will cover the difference between a project, program, portfolio, key things. Let's move to this next slide. Project, program and portfolio. A project, or it's already you know, which has no end and uh, a unique product. A project may be managed in three separate scenarios a standalone project, a program within a program, and portfolio. Program is nothing but the collection of the projects, and portfolio is the collection of a some set of projects and a program. It's a simple way. So, programs are not large projects. We have a series of projects, but they are not large. But a portfolio is a set of projects, programs, and the we have the portfolios also and the operations also it's grouped to achieve some objectives so portfolio is a combination of these two and program is already I explained it's a group of the related projects so which have some uh, uh, the benefits but some simple way a project a program is a set of projects a portfolio is a set of series of projects program and portfolios let's give a small example which related to my technology we are doing a single set of patching on SAP system so it's a project we are we have some end date and we have some set of exact tools and if you are doing multiple set of patching on the same system it will keep on doing the patching agency it's just a program it's a program of doing the patching things this is a simple things of this one so and it's for when you come to a portfolio, I know it's not related to the exact example, but it is a combination of the project programs and the and these things a portfolio also. So we can have many examples and know this point. Uh, a project can be done without a program, but a program will always have one or more projects. The same thing I have explained before. Uh, keynote for your preparation is that uh, always resume as you are a project manager of a bigger project that is a large project minimum of one year duration and it's spread across and spread across the many countries and have many stakeholders with hundreds of team members and one million minimum of one million budget so when you are preparing for and when we are reading the pm book guide think that as you are a big project manager and your project is spread across different countries and you are uh, managing uh, a minimum of one million dollar project and you have team members across the globe so then only 
the uh, you will get the right things at the right time on the questionnaires so let's move to the next key concept project life cycle versus the product life cycle just think in mind as a project versus product project is some kind of set and rules to execute the things and the product life cycle is something the cycles of the product for example we, when we are developing a product so we'll have different stages the starting the beginning we have the, the growth the machine decline so here it is mentioned in the terms of the, the management things but so simple as the how the product is uh, produced fine let's concentrate on this differences first every project goes through some kind of a project life cycle shown in the diagram on the left in general it always have the form of a project start organizing preparing carrying out the work and ending the project an example may be and in a simple way start plan design build test pilot roll out and close down the project phases on the screen are typically separated by a distinct and formal gates in between so there are some formal gates here these are called as the phase gates phase gates uh, which need to be passed in order to move to one phase to the next so once the starting of the project it's complete the phase gate indicates that this the, the stage is completed and we are moving to the next stage organizing and preparing uh, it is of the project life cycle the product that is being produced by the project will often exist long after the project has ended hope you understand this line actually the product will often go through a product life cycle itself i already explained for every product we have some separate a product life cycle itself which goes through all the phases as shown in the diagram on the right typically many projects will done to move the product through this project life cycle so it is very clear uh, it is some set of uh, pro project is some set of rules uh, tools and techniques to execute a project and product is something the phases which contains within the product so let's move to the next slide where uh, different life cycles are just mentioned we will go in more detail about this each one in the predictive agile project life cycles we have different uh, life cycles referring to the project life cycle we have understand about predictive versus agile project life cycle which is most important we have predictive life cycle first one is where the project scope time and cost are determined in the early phases of the life cycle it's a predictive it's already predictive that the scope is already defined everything is ready so we are going with the changes so any changes to the scope are carefully managed we have to be carefully managed because the scope time is already defined coming to the iterative things the project scope is generally determined early in the project life cycle however time and cost estimates are routinely modified there is a difference between the predictive and the iterative for each iterations the scope is already determined but the time and cost estimates are routinely modified so this is the for iterative coming to incremental hope you understand by the word increment so every stage there is an increment the deliverable is produced through a series of iterations within the predefined frame so every in iterations there will be an increment for both of for three of these things coming to the adaptive life cycles are the the important agile iterative or incremental the detailed scope is defined and approved before the start of each iteration for each iterations the scope is defined and it get approved for each iteration iteration 1 2 3 so for each iterations it is approved and defined so that there will be no fluctuation i mean no uh, problems occur in the later stage of iterations and coming to the last hybrid cycle it is a combination of the predictive and adaptive life cycle we'll come more detail in the next videos let's move to the important one what is progressive elaboration so before that so the pmi says i remember this one there are different approaches of life cycle types this and uh, i've explained you just overview of the options 
but we will have more information in the next chapters i has mentioned because agile project life cycle is more important for our project uh, things let's move to the progressive elaboration it is one of this typical pmi terms as we call them that you will come across into several times in the pm book guide you will definitely come across many times about this keyword so what is it the iterative process the repeated process of increasing the level of detail in a project management plan as a greater amount of information and more accurate estimates become available for every stage there is something which is going to add to that iteration and it will progress it's not something like the scoop grade which is not recommended by the pmp because if you are putting extra time and extra budget to your project and it's keep on going so at the end of the story there will be a loss for your project so it's an increasing at the level of detail it's a i mean you are providing it as a greater amounts of information and with the accurate estimates it will not uh, exceed your the budget and the simple example is there the project scope will be broadly described early in the project and made more explicit and detail as the project team develops and with better more complete understandings so this is the things so progress to elaboration should not be confused with the scope creep where the in in the scope creep we are putting all your efforts we are going to add the resources you are going to add the budget you are going to add everything and at the end of the project the budget will exceed and the customer will screw you up this is a progress to elaboration so it will come it was uh, and all your these things in the later stages okay let's move to the next slide the project the key concept the project management processes there are 49 of these processes project management processes grouped into five process groups and 10 knowledge areas five five process groups is that initiating planning executing monitoring and controlling this is the five groups and coming to the knowledge areas as i said integration scope schedule time resource uh, risk management communication management and so on uh, in the next slide we will have these things let me explain uh, an important concept here the tailoring the tailoring means the required processes only used to complete the project let me give a small example for a project if you required only five of the project management processes and you are going through all the process groups so the only the five required processes which are required for your project you are tailoring something from the complete bulk of project management processes it's something that you are doing some kind of uh, uh, polish to your project uh, management processes and you are taking that processes to execute your project this is a simple way of tailoring let's discuss in more details about these uh, process groups and uh, knowledge areas let's move to the next slide here you can see i said we have five process groups which comes uh, you already i mean aware of from your the project life cycles that is initiating that is the starting stage you are planning something that is the planning stage you are doing you are going for implementation that is executing phase and you are monitoring and controlling this is the important phase and we are just closing the project this is a, this process groups comes for every project so coming to the project management knowledge areas these are very important the integration management the first thing which integrates all the pro, the other nine project uh, knowledge areas and it gives and it gives the results coming to the scope you know the scope of your project schedule that is the timeline the cost management the quality management the resource management communication management risk management procurement management and the stakeholder management these are the 10 knowledge areas which we are going to discuss in detail in every each and every chapter so we have more 10 videos for each knowledge areas and i will explain you in more detail about this we have a triple constant we will call as ssc schedule scope and cost just remember it is interlinked in all the projects it is scope is linked with cost cost is with schedule schedule with scope okay okay let's move to the on this one now before going to the that before going to that a 
now hope you understand uh, uh, how it goes with the uh, process group. Let's move to the next section. They do overlap. I mean, this uh, this uh, schedule, this all the ten knowledge areas, they do overlap significantly, and there are no distinct dates between the various process groups. So, hope you now understand what I'm going to say. That it's how it's goes with the process groups. Let's move to the complete picture of process groups and knowledge areas, how they are linked. Here you can see on the right hand side how it's the how it's they are linked from starting to finish. Each way each process group has linked somewhere and it's interlinked with other processes. Note that the knowledge area and the process numbering look funny. They start at four. I mean the integration management started four so that because the numbers refer to the this chapter in beyond bog where are defined is the first knowledge area which is covered in the uh, chapter four so in the uh, here the about the processes 24 out of 49 are in the planning process group i'm just explaining uh, this, this is the same things with reference to how they are linked with respect to the knowledge areas, there are seven processes in integration management, six in the scope, six in the schedule, four in the cost, three in the quality, six in the resource management, three in the communication, seven in the risk management and three in the procurement management. Here you can see here the list and uh, we can remember this by logic remembering something like uh, the, uh, as you remember your phone number 766436 this is some I have set a code for this and also with respect to the process groups we have separate initiating planning this these are top top ones initiating planning executing monitoring and closing these are the uh, uh, processes and they are uh, each knowledge area have just in the initiating group we have two and in the planning 24 executing 10 and monitoring and controlling 12 and for closing one process respectively in all the five processes this uh, this uh, we are not going to by heart i have just by making practice when you learn each knowledge area you when, once you get an idea on all the processes which are defined in different process groups so we'll definitely remember and you can write this table in one minute so let's move to this it's an just an overview on this let's move to what is contains each process what it contains each process in the knowledge area it contains the inputs tools and techniques and the outputs we will call as ITTOs inputs tools techniques and outputs for each inputs we have something like in what we do in the projects that is the project charter project management plan the project documents uh, the EEFs the uh, organizational process assets so, so it is mentioned in the inputs and the tool and techniques will have what tools are we are going to execute the project expert judgment we are taking the experts advice data analysis we are making the decision makings uh, tools and techniques interpersonal and team skills something like the emotional intelligence and so on the product analysis these are the few tools and techniques and coming to the outputs what you will give the output the scope document the process document assumptions log requirement documentation will will have the stakeholder register so everything this are the will get the inputs in other words what you need to start what you do with the inputs and what outputs are the results of that easily remember they will come as a acronym ITTOs. the main key point is that how these 49 processes are linked interact with each other interact with each other before that uh, let uh, look at the bottom what are the inputs to prepare a breakfast so we'll have the you have the mail you have the eggs you have the floor everything is there but how we are going to cook with the tools and techniques so you are, can you can see the chef making something on the micro oven or is doing some tools and the output is you are going to get the breakfast so it's an in the general language i just mentioned these pictures for the inputs tools and techniques and outputs so let's move to 
how these 49 processes the inputs outputs tools and techniques how they interact with each other for different knowledge areas in simple words i will say as the output of one process will be input of another it makes sense right if you are getting in the project management plan we are getting the project management plan as output we have developed a project management plan but this the same output is going to use for your next phase so it means this the the in what i said that the output of one process will be an input of another so th this is so this is a simple way how these are linked so each uh, the output is we can use the tools and techniques also will be similar for most of the processes because at these as this uh, processes are link, interlinked so we'll come across of all these things so okay moving to the next important concept in this framework is project management environment where it works it is very important before that uh, uh, we will discuss this project chatter later first we will go to the EFs and OPS which we call as enterprise environmental factors and the organizational process assets they are the two major categories which influence the project environment where the project works the environment these are the important things the, these are the two main things that influence the project the PMBOK guide splits them into two categories what i said eefs and ops these are the acronyms for the enterprise environmental factors and organization process assets you will see them many times as inputs to most of the 49 processes and you will definitely get questions on the exam where some influences are listed and asking if they are eefs or ops as a general rule and what i'm saying the enterprise environmental factors are the integrated part of the company structure as you can see the culture locations id software legal restrictions and industry things company's culture that is used and adhered to a particular project and that were unable to modify should have lived with that project while the ops where i can see the policies and procedures historic information templates issues and defects management procedures these are the resources that may be used and adapt to our project such as what i mentioned so these are the organizational process assets the policies procedures we can change historic information templates we can use the previous historic information of that successful project and we can use for the current project we can use the templates for the previous projects so it's an organizational process assets so the ops get constantly updated unlike the efs which are not just there so this is the enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets where the project works the environment in which works so uh, after that we'll move to the what is a project charter this is the project charter is the, is the initial document for every project is a document issued by the project sponsor who will sponsoring the project that formally authorizes the existence of a project it's a simple way and it also it once is the project charter is created it means that the project manager has the authority to apply the organization resources to the project activities so it's a uh, simple way it is defined uh, you will come across uh, what is project charter and everything in the next slides the project charter is not the project management plan remember this one which describes how the project will be executed monitored and controlled this typically marks the end of initiation in the initiation phase once it is completed so your pro your project charter is ready so it's a simple way so what is project charter after the eefs and ops we'll discuss about the types of organizations before that we will discuss about the project uh, the key uh, concept means the role of the project manager Uh, the role of the project manager in terms of different organizational structure we have different organizations uh, uh, types of organizations we have functional weak matrix strong matrix projectized matrix the project managers authority has less in the functional where the complete functional manager has authority for the weak matrix it will has the low authority 
and for the strong matrix that is combination of functional and the these things will have the medium and for the projectized the project manager is the boss where it has the high priority and a high authority it will come across the types of organizations and coming to the pmo what is pmo generally we heard this term project management office a pmo is the organizational structure that standards the projects related governance process and facilitates the steer of resources it share the resources every company i mean uh, every big company has this pmo office established for providing the different template trainings and resources whenever the project management requires so uh, as i say each organization has a separate pmo office which operates according to their defined roles we have three dif different pmo offices first is supportive controlling controlling and directive this these are the three things which has mentioned in the diagram for the supportive things it for the supportive pmo uh, what it uh, does it provides a service support to the project manager service support in terms of templates trainings and lessons learned so in, in each project it provides these templates and coming to the controlling things it has a moderate uh, control whereas the support has over the lower control and the moderate control it offers a consultation and supervisions the project policies it's something like the organization processes that is to the methodologies templates and governance and coming to the last thing which has the high control the direct to pmo takes over takes over the project and its execution also so it directly manages the project and uh, it guides the project manager and also the project managers report to the pmo so these three kinds of pmo sister will be exist in each of the organizations and uh, with respect to the projects work so this is a pmo uh, in the simple way and as already explained the role of the project manager that is it's assigned with performing organizations to lead the team to responsible for achieving the project objectives so it has uh, already explained the authority of the different things so project manager is a key person who has to interact with all the people the project team first the people managers the resource managers the sponsors the governing bodies steering committees the pmo office he has to report in terms of the projectized organization and he has to interact with the stakeholders suppliers customers and users so though the key thing is as a project manager role so we have different competence competencies levels for a project manager this is a pmi triangle where it is clearly mentioned as a project manager should have the technical project knowledge that is technical project manager and the leadership qualities that is the second leadership and the strategic and business management so that he has to take the decisions for the organization's success so he has to take the strategic things for the technical project management he has to def he has to work in terms of scope schedule and cost management also for the leadership he can guide and motivate the team to work and for the strategic and business management industry and business knowledge application so he has to be a decision maker also so what skills do you need to master to be an outstanding project manager so these three keys are important for a project manager we have lot of them but mastering all of them be a long life journey but this pmi triangle is is uh, i mean covering all the things which contains the technical things leadership things and strategic things and i you can see the picture he acts as a conductor in an orchestra doesn't produce any result but he will manages all the rhythms and music and all the people of his group so he will be i i will treat him as a conductor of the orchestra this is the uh, key concepts which uh, today we have covered the project framework and the project management processes so in the next video we are going to start with the no, uh, the knowledge areas first with the scope document uh, scope management and so on so thanks for watching this video if you have questions kindly send email to this id which i mentioned on the video and provide your feedback on the bottom of this video and subscribe to my channel and thanks a lot for listening to my first video thank you thank you friends